God bless everybody and welcome to my channel where I'll be sharing many different powerful Christian testimonies that I think are going to be a blessing to your life. Ex-witches, ex-Satanists, as well as heaven and hell testimonies. And today we have a brother with a very powerful hell testimony that everybody needs to listen to. So I'll let Brother Angel introduce himself and begin sharing his powerful hell testimony with us. Brother Angel. Good morning. Uh, my testimony that the Lord told me to tell about four years ago, he told me to start telling my testimony and I kept it a secret for about 30 years or more. And um, this is uh, something I kept to myself only because I was really frightened what happened and and i just thought it was just for me at the time and I, I didn't know that the lord wanted me to share it and um basically what i was also when i was a teenager i just grew up um not loving myself not knowing why god created me and i didn't have any purpose in life um and i was having one um Thing that kept me going on and i was boxing at the time and actually started boxing when i was nine years old and i grew up in texas and boxing helped me out a little bit but to the point where only when i was like really active and then there was a time that i didn't box because i moved from um from wichita falls texas down to houston texas and i didn't find a gym for like two years and um but even after when I found a gym and I started boxing again, um, it was it was a spirit that I didn't know at the time of kept on haunting me. I was a Catholic. I grew up Catholic, and I really loved the Lord. And I go to church all the time, even on my own. Even when um, my parents didn't say you had to go to church, they were, they were just casual. They said you can go to church if you want to. But they weren't really pushing it on me. But I used to go to church all the time. And I remember I was uh, just turned 16 years old and I was praying. Uh, and before the mass begins, you pray. And as soon as I start to pray, I could feel the Holy Spirit tell me to leave this church because my spirit does not dwell here. And I, I knew it was God. I just, I just felt his presence powerful. So I just got up and left. And I'll make this a story short because it's a long story. But basically what happened was I had a friend of mine who also left the church, um, a very close friend of mine. His name was David. And he left that church two or three months before, and I haven't seen him for a while. And he only lived a couple of houses down on my street. And I went to visit him, and he told me that he left the church, and he got born again, which I never met, never knew this word being born again. And he showed me of a track. And it was a, a chick track. That's the name of the company. And it had a little cartoon characters. It's like a, it's like a comic book, but it tells a story of how to receive Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior. And I accepted Jesus Christ through that chick track. And after that, I, I felt the presence of God so powerfully. I mean, I, I was I was happy. I, I didn't um, I didn't want to die anymore. Well, let me back up because I did try to take my life two times before that, and I was fourteen the first time. And um, I'll tell you really quick. Basically, uh, the Lord kept me alive because I, I I I went to a tree behind my house, and I I checked this, the the tree the the limb that I was going to use to hang myself with. And it was sturdy, it was strong, and I put the rope my, around my head and I jumped. But as soon as I jumped, the the branch broke, and it was dry rotted. It was like it, it blew my mind because it was strong before, but now it was just dead. The the branch was totally dead. So I was so embarrassed, and I was only fourteen. I was embarrassed, and I just went inside and cried myself. And then about a year later. I tried to end my life again, but this time my sister caught me, and I, all I did was put a bag over my head and try to suffocate myself. And um, she, she found me in my room by myself, and she she stopped me from that. But after that is when I got born again. I felt the peace and the love and joy of, of God, and I wanted to live. I didn't want to die anymore. So I didn't find a church when I was 16. I got born again, but I didn't know what church to go to. and of course, I didn't have a vehicle or any way to, to go to a church, but I, I found a little Bible, not just trying to read the Bible now and then and just trying to know God that way. 
when I graduated high school, I moved in with my brother and um, started working a job. And I found a church, I actually found a church there. And then it, it, I grew into, into the things of God. And it was a small full gospel church. But um, I did not know that this spirit of death or spirit suicide was still haunting me because there was stages in my life where I'll be on fire for God and I'll, and I'll be doing things for the Lord, like street witnessing, and I'll, I'm trying to learn the things of God. And I, I received the Holy Spirit and I start praying in a different language or praying in tongues. And I was doing my best to do, do whatever God wants me to do. And, uh, but one time I was, I believe I just turned 22. I remember it was in the winter time. The spirit hit me really hard this time. And I didn't know why. I'm not gonna go into the details why a person wants to end their life because it's a spirit and it's depression. A, a spirit of depression will hit somebody so strong. Sometimes it's hard just to get out of bed. It, it just overcomes you. It just overshadows you inside and out. I had a friend who was in, um, in, in a missionary and she grew up as a missionary and she knew the Lord, that's all she knew. So she was a very close friend of mine. And I was talking to her one day and I asked her a question, if, if a Christian, a born again Christian who's serving the Lord, if they take their life, will they go to heaven or will they go to hell? And she told me that, that they'll go to heaven. I, I, now, I didn't tell her that it was me asking to, uh, uh, I was thinking about taking my life out. I didn't tell her that I was thinking about it. I just wanted to know the answer from her, trusting her that she knew God more than I did. She grew up in the church. So um, I just thought I was going to go in this misery and, and be with Jesus. Um, I was doing my best to do the right thing, I would pray. I would go to the front of the aisle at the end of the church. I would go up to the front to get prayer. Now, I didn't tell him I was suicidal. I will just tell him, you know, having problems with my life. I'm having problems with my emotions. I'm, I'm feeling down. I'll just tell him little things like that. Like, I, I just need help um, focusing. I need help with my, you know, getting the joy of the Lord. I just need, needed to know why God made me. I just wanted, had a, I wanted a purpose. I still didn't know what my purpose in life was, even though, at, at times, I would do things for God. Like I said, I would go with a group of people and we go on the street and win a scene. I'll pass out tracks and tell people about Jesus. And I had the joy of doing that. But the Spirit came on me so strong that one day I, I decided, okay, I'm going to be with Jesus because my friend told me that I'm going to be with him. And I said, Lord, I don't know why you made me really, but I want to be with you. So I had a this time i had a, a borrowed from a, a friend of mine and <clears throat> i just told him oh, i just want to go to the range and shoot it and he, and he let me a, i don't remember exactly a chamber it had a magazine and you had to pull the uh you had to put a round in, into the chamber and then fire it and he showed me how to how to load it so this time i'm by myself and i loaded it up and put it around in the chamber and i put it right here on my head on my temple on my left temple and as I put it in my temple, as, as soon as I put it right here on my temple, I could feel time slow down. It just slowed down to like nothing. It just froze. That's, that's the best way I could explain it. And immediately I saw through the eyes of Jesus and I saw that he was sitting on his throne and to his left was a light. A huge light and I knew that I was a father and I saw the light shining down at the people and there was millions and millions of people going arching around and the light was shining down and out of this light were two things was was power and love a love I never felt now I saw the corner of Jesus eye of this and millions of people was worshiping him and there were on top there were angels like on an arch around and the angels were flying and they were covering, they had six wings and there was many angels and they had six wings and they were worshiping him. And some of the angels had like eyes on their wings. And immediately 
Jesus just jumps off his throne room. He jumps up and over the angels and he arches over out of heaven. And he comes to this out of heaven and this nothingness. That's all I could describe it as there's nothing there. That's the best thing I could describe. I don't even know what it what it is, this nothingness. And then he enters the universe and he he's he's zoomed so fast, so fast. And I see the earth, and the earth is in the center of the universe. And then he's he's literally standing right behind me, right here. And I have the gun right here. I just I just barely put the, the gun on my, my forehead, and he's right there. And I see this through his eyes, and it happened so fast. And he stands right behind me, and he says, don't do it. His voice was so powerful. When he said, don't do it, I thought every everything that is alive on earth, under the water, every creature on the planet, I thought everything that is alive heard him say, don't do it. It, it, it shook me. It shook me so powerfully because the power in his voice, you could feel the authority and the power. I understood when he said, let there be light. It just came to be. I understood clearly how he created everything just by speaking. I understood that. It's so powerful, his voice. He is so powerful and authority. And, 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 and he was upset when he said, don't do it. He didn't say it nicely. He said it like he's angry at me, upset with me. And I was I was about to put the gun. I had the, I had the gun right here. I was about to put the gun down. He didn't give me a chance. He immediately opened a porthole, which is not that big, about the size of a volleyball or soccer ball. And he's right, right in front of my, my feet, right in front. And he took me down this porthole. And it's pitch black. It is so black. It is darker than darkest thing you ever seen. It's just like the darkness is alive. And I start, I felt a fear. Immediately, the first thing I felt was fear. If you ever, ever been afraid of anything, if you ever had a traumatic experience, that fear is nothing compared to the fear that you feel when you're going down to this porthole. And I know immediately that I'm going to hell. I knew that. I knew that this porthole is taking me to hell. And it's long. I mean, it, he was traveling so fast. But at the same time, I could tell that this it's very long. It's like thousands of thousands of miles. I don't. I couldn't understand how far, but it's probably wider than than, than the whole United States, or longer than the whole as wide as the United States. It's thousands of thousands of miles deep. Midway through this porthole, I could start hearing screams. Just screams. Screams are so loud, and that scared me. And at the very bottom of the porthole i could see a little light just flickering just flickering a little bit just here and there here and there and as i'm going down deeper and deeper i could see the light getting bigger and bigger now i'm, I'm really freaking out because he said don't do it and i'm about to pull the gun down and he's taking me here and i'm not understanding why he's taking me to hell i understand clearly he's taking me to hell and i don't, I don't know why because i thought i'm going to be with him at the end of the porthole, he slows down, and I see the ceiling. I come into hell, and there's a ceiling. And as soon as I come down, he like, immediately stops and slows me down really, really slow, and I look to my right. And as I look to my right, I see a dungeon, and I see this demon. Um, and he's, he's big. He's maybe about 10 to 12 feet tall he's horrific looking he he's he's like two crew two or three creatures together he's like half mammal half reptilian part human uh he's just so deformed and he has his huge feet i mean his feet are about six seven feet wide and long and there's this man and he steps on this man he he steps on this man now when he steps on this man He's like, okay, so 
let me tell you what it's what it's like. It's so horrific. In, in combat, sometimes a tank will run over bodies. When when in during the war, and um, and I was in combat in Iraq in 2003 in the invasion. And I remember some of the tanks will run over the body of the Iraqis, and there's nothing there. It's just it's just skin and bone and blood, and it, there's nothing. This is what this man looked like when the demon stepped on him. This demon, it looked like a tank just ran over him. And he has his back towards me, this demon. And and I'm looking to my right. And he knows that I just I just entered hell. And he, the Lord just slows me down. And he knows that I just entered. So he turns around and he looks at what when he looks at me. The hatred. They hate us. They hate you so much. Just the hatred in his eyes will literally put so much fear in you that I, I believe you, this body couldn't withstand just one look that his body will have a heart attack if he was here on earth and he'll look at you. That's how much hatred he was, he has for us and you would go into shock. He saw me and he and as he saw me, he just looked at me. And then the man that he smushed just came back together again. And now he came back together again. Like he was made whole all over again. Like nothing was wrong with him. And then he turns around at the guy again because he kind of like knew that he came back together again. And he starts beating him up some more. He starts stomping on him some more and stepping on him some more. And it's just a continuous process. I understood that this man, and this is the toughest level of hell. And I understood that that was the lightest degree of hell. And it's going to get worse as you go deeper. And I also understood that this is an ongoing thing, this torment that is going on and on. That this man is being tormented over and over again by this demon. When the Lord, when as soon as I enter hell, I like automatically knew, like He put an understanding, my knowledge in my head. Like I already knew where I was at, and I already knew were in hell I was at and I knew that I was at the very very center of hell and it's it's huge it's like 10,000 feet from the very top of hell to the very bottom of hell and then on the bottom of hell there's a lake that's even a thousand feet lower and this lake is full of lava and fire and it's it's, it's like 10 miles wide I could look from the left and to the right and I could see this is about 10 miles wide and this lake of lava is just boiling lava it's not moving left to right it's just like lava just boiling just boiling up and i'm at the very center and now the lord starts to bring me down and i'm as he's bringing me down he's slowly turning me around i mean he's just slowly turning me around and showing me everything and they are it's huge it's bigger than any city on the planet I could immediately see 10 miles away. If I wanted to see somebody 10 miles away, I could zoom in and see somebody 10 miles away. I understand that. And there's millions and millions of people in this place. And, and from uh, the walls of hell are like caves and caverns. And there's small walls or small pockets and there's bigger ones. The best way I could try to describe it is like an ant farm if you ever see anybody has a glass and have ants creating their little homes is that's probably the best description of it but at the same time there's huge pockets in there like you you could put i don't know a, a, a hundred or, or 200 feet wide or a circumference of a pocket of a tunnel going deeper into hell and you could hear screams in there and that's the other thing about hell is the screams it, it never ends it never lets up it's just continuous screaming continually screams and horrific screams of torture being people being tortured and trying to escape and they're being tortured over and over and over and over and over and never it never lets up and never lets up that alone is so much fear, so fearful to just to hear there's so many people in hell more than i could imagine M more that I, I it blew my mind how many people millions let's just say millions okay i, I don't know maybe maybe billions i couldn't count 
But in these caverns and caves, and there's different layers, I saw people in there, and the Lord is just slowly, slowly taking me down. Now, I I told the Lord for some reason, I don't know why. I just said, Lord, don't don't drop, don't put me down there. Don't take me any lower. Just go ahead and drop me off right here. Don't don't take me any lower, Lord. This is good enough. I mean, actually, if you just take me up to the highest level, that'll be fine. I don't want to go any lower because I knew I could feel the torment. I could feel the torment. The lower I'm getting down, I could feel more and more oppression and more torment from the screams and the, and, and what the people are suffering. So he's taking me down. And I still don't understand why he's showing me this. And there's a, he's taking me down to the center. I mean, he, he really wants me to see where he wants, what, what he wants to show me. And I'm looking down and I see this river. It's like a thousand feet wide. And there's two cliffs on each side. It's about a thousand feet high. And the walls are full of slime. And in the very, very center, there are people packed in the very middle. And there's millions and millions of people in the very center. There's no pit, nobody on the left. There's no but there's no side. It's only right in the middle of um, of this lake. I'll call it a lake of fire or a river of fire. And the river goes out to other parts of hell that I couldn't see. It kind of like streams out to other areas of hell, and I could hear the screams coming in from there. But the Lord is just slowly taking me down to this area and turning me around and showing me everything. And I see people that um, I could tell that they were in different times when they're there, like somebody who probably died a hundred years ago or a thousand years ago, two, three hundred years ago, different eras of, of our, our history of mankind. I see them, their attire and not just, not only that, but I could see that they, they've been there for a long time. Some been there for several hundred years. Some been there for maybe several thousands of years before Christ. And he he takes me down to the middle of where the people are at. And he, then I'm hovered um, about 30, 25 to 30 feet above these people. So as he's taking me down, I see the la the lower level, the last level of hell. And then there's a cliff, and there's demons just looking down at the people. And they're just laughing and mocking the people. And I understand that if a demon falls in there, he can't get out. That this demon will be tormented just like the humans are. I understand that. So they're just looking at the people and mocking them. And the people are being burnt. And there's so many people, they are together like this, okay? There is no space. There is no space between somebody. Not not even not even an inch. Okay, not even a millimeter. They're, they're, they are all jammed together. People are just pushed together from wall to wall in the middle. And they're just and people that are they don't have a wall. They're just for some reason there's like a force keeping them together. Somebody can't push out or swim out to be free. No, they are s s squashed in there. And he he, he 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 has me floated just above them. And the screams are so intense. This is where most of the screams of hell come from because they never stop screaming. And he has me there and I, I'm, I'm blown away. My mind is just blown away. Like, why is he showing me this? And I see people from all walks of life there. Uh, I see young people, I see old people. I, I saw this one person that has a skeleton now the 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 liquid fire the lava that's consuming them it, it consumes the, their entire body and they are all fighting on each other trying to claw each other out trying to get out of this lava as much as they can like if they were in a pool and just to get like a millimeter out because it's just so horrific but they get down somebody else pushes them down and then when they come back up their whole flesh is just melted away all the way down to none but skin. Um, I mean, excuse me. They're melted away down to their, just the meat and sometimes the bones too. But it grows back. It grows back immediately. As, as quick as it was just taken away, it grows back immediately and they suffer again. And I saw this one guy 
or woman, I don't know who it was, but all it was, it was just a skeleton. I could remember them screaming. And and this one really, I was looking at them for a while. I couldn't tell if it was a man or woman because all it was was a skeleton and all they had was their eyes, but the eyes were pitch black. And that's all they had. And they were screaming, still screaming, but there was no voice coming out of them because they didn't have a tongue. They didn't have anything. It was just a skeleton with their eyes. And I understood that maybe this person was the first person there in this pit and has never left. And they are all, they're all being, uh, they're being cooked alive and they can't die. You know, I understood that. And when I was there, so many things were going through my mind because I don't, I, first of all, I still think that I'm going to go to heaven because there's this thing called once saved, always saved. And that's what this lady uh, who told me, she basically said that, you know, once you're saved, you can't go to hell because you're saved all the time and you'll go to heaven. So I, I believe that I, I trusted her. So I believed that once a person gives their life to Jesus Christ and no, they cannot ever lose their salvation no matter what what happens i believe that so i'm not understanding why why is he showing me this place what i, I thought i'm going to be with him in heaven why is the lord showing me this and he's showing me he's he he's waiting patiently for me to get the answer and i still don't get the answer so i'm, I'm my whole time in hell was maybe about two two and a half minutes on earth time there is no time in hell. That's what I want to get to. I understood he, it blew my mind. It blew my mind what eternity is. Eternity doesn't, uh, is like time does not exist. It's like a time loop that lasts one second and it loops over and over again. Or people have heard of time loops like, let's just say you wake up the same day and the same day is, is the same day. Every time you get up, it's the same day over and over again. It doesn't matter. You can't change that. But you shorten the time loop to like one second. And that's what like eternity was. It's just it's just an ongoing thing that's you can never there's no there's no time there. And I understood eternity. I understood forever. I understood that this is this is it. There is no other chapter in my life. This is my life. This is where I'm gonna be at for for all time, for all. Time doesn't exist there. It's just for, I'm going to be there. I understood that. That's, that scared me. I said, uh, the thing in hell is there's no hope. There is no love. There's no hope. Everything good that I had here is gone. There's no love. I, I, I saw a couple that were married. And they didn't love each other. That they were together in this pit. And they didn't even have any love for each other. They both were trying to just get out of there on their own. They're not even friends anymore. There's no friends in hell. There's no buddy. There's no, in this pit where I, where I the Lord took me, there is nobody there that you could have been best friends or, or your spouse. And they are nothing to you. No, all you want to do is just get out of there. All they want to do is just get out of there. I saw, now, this one also blew my mind. I saw a lady. When, now, the Lord only allowed me to, understand why some people are there not everybody because there was literally millions and millions of people in this place and i saw this lady and for some reason when i saw her i zoomed into her and she was a distance away from me maybe i don't know 100 feet from me but i could immediately zoom into her and see that she's like right in front of me and when i saw her i knew immediately that she was a christian and that she could not forgive her husband for having an affair and the husband also repented that he only had this affair one time and he, he regretted it and he repented and he and he asked her to forgive him and she couldn't and they were both in the church the husband and the wife they were both in the church and the husband cheated on on his wife with another lady in the church but she couldn't let it go even though he he, he said he was sorry and he he went back to the to the wife. He never, he did not leave her. It was just a one time thing that he did. She could not let go, and she could not forgive. And that one unforgiveness, because of that is why she's there today. When she died, she died with unforgiveness in her heart, and she went to that pit. And she didn't die 
I know she she probably lived on like another year after that incident. She didn't die um, long afterwards. And she wasn't old either. She was like in her 40s when this happened. When I was just in there and, and, and looking at all these people from different times and I was just wondering why is he showing me this? I'm still not understanding. And then I saw um, somebody that just died. And I remember looking to the Lord and I said, Lord, what about him? He was a young man. And when I saw him, he was like three miles away from me. But three miles where these people are is, is probably bigger than three. It's probably like four miles wide that these people are in the center because he fell from the ceiling. And I saw him fall from the ceiling and he was screaming. And when I saw him, I knew, I didn't know his name or anything, but I knew that he was 19 years old. He died in a motorcycle accident, but he grew up in the church. His parents were born again, and they loved him, and he rebelled. He rebelled from the Lord, and he was 19 years old, out of high school, but he still lived with his parents, <clears throat> and he backslid, backslid heavy, I mean, really heavy. I mean, he, he got into all kinds of worldly things. And uh, he immediately, and his parents kept on telling him to repent, kept on telling him all the time to repent, and he didn't. He didn't repent. He, he just wanted to enjoy, this, the, I guess, the, the, the pleasures of sin. And I don't know why he backslid, but I understood that his parents continually told him to repent and come back to the Lord because he's not to have that life because God loves him. And God has a better life for him, but he wouldn't listen to his parents. And he was on his motorcycle, and he was actually racing. He bought himself a really fast motorcycle, and he died on it. And he just, I saw him fall, and he fell into the pit. And when I, when I saw him fall, I actually turned around to and try to see. The Lord was right behind me. I tried to see him. I couldn't really see him, but I pointed to him. I said, "Lord, what about him?" Is going to somebody going to save him? Now the Lord didn't say anything to me. He just said, "Don't do it." That's all I remember. And he he was quiet after that. He just said, "Don't do it." I didn't get it. I still didn't get it. But um, I saw that, and it, it really scared me. Why he's not talking to me? He's not saying anything. And um, I remember. There's this lady, I saw this, for some reason, she wasn't too far from me, maybe about 10 or 15 feet from me. And everybody here in hell, they're screaming. They're just, it's just a constant being, they're being boiled alive in this hot lava and they're screaming and just digging on each other and doesn't and it doesn't let up whatsoever, it doesn't give up. And I saw this one girl, because she was the most beautiful girl. And that's why I saw her, because I saw how beautiful she was. So it's like, <clears throat> It's like a girl that's so beautiful, <clears throat> if you were to see her or if a man were to see her today, he would like immediately fall in love with her. That's how be beautiful she was, just just so naturally beautiful. And I saw her and I'm thinking, I'm asking, why is she there? And for some reason, I think when, when I saw her, she knew somebody was looking at her. And she turned around and when she saw me, she turned around and saw me, she threw her hands up. As soon as she threw her hands up, I knew why I was there. For some reason, the Lord showed me, or I, I, I had understanding, that if I pull this trigger, well, I had to go here. If I pull the trigger, he's going to drop me. He's going to drop me right with her. And I just, it just clicked. Finally, I understood. And I said, Lord, I, I didn't know. And I'm just looking at these people. I said, I did not know this is where I'm going to be if I pull that trigger. And then I looked at that girl. I, I looked at her and she. And she was screaming in her eyes. She couldn't she couldn't talk. She was just so screaming so, so hard. She couldn't talk. And she just screaming through her through her hands. She threw her hands up. And she just wanted me to pull her out. I, I couldn't pull her out. I didn't have the power to pull out. And people all around her saw her. Everybody around her saw her. 
And they all threw their hands up at me. All of them threw their hands up at me. And I was looking at all everybody, and they're all throwing their hands up at me and saying, just screaming and wanting me to pull them out. And I said to everyone, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. I'm telling everybody, I'm sorry because I, I can't I can't pull you out. But at the same time, I'm not going to be with you. And I said, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me. But I'm I'm not I forgive me for what I didn't know. And as soon as I said, forgive me, Lord Jesus, I said, as soon as I said forgive me, he immediately started pulling me back into up in hell, all the way to that porthole. And I, I was just looking at everybody. I was just looking down at everybody, and they're all screaming and just throwing their hands up and wanted me to pull them out. And I just felt so 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 sad. It just felt so so bad. I couldn't do anything for them. I couldn't. I had no power to pull them out. And I was coming back to this tunnel. And when I was coming back to this tunnel, I could still feel the Lord that he was angry with me. He wasn't, I never felt like he loves me or, um, you know, it's okay, my son, I love you now. I, I didn't feel that. I felt like I was being disciplined and I was being corrected and I felt he was still so angry. But I felt that he loved me and uh, of, he told me, he told me, son, this is why you don't have to go to hell because I paid the full price for you. So you won't have to. And I didn't know that. He said, I paid the full price for your sins so that you don't have to pay for your sins. And that's what he told me when, I, when he came back. And, and he, when I came back uh, to my body, when he came back to my body, it, it, it immediately blew my mind because I felt like this is a dream state. When I was in hell, I was more alive and more awake and more alert. And everything was... It, 10 times or 100 times more alive and when I came back to my body it actually felt like I'm dreaming I, like this dimension that I'm here every day is just like a dream compared to the reality in the spiritual realm that blew my mind well, he, he brought me back to my body he closed the porthole and he, and he left and he, when he was leaving I could feel that he was still very upset with me but after that I just I put the down and I just simply you know I put it back in the case and um that was the last time let me tell you that was the last time I ever even ever thought that the depression I ever thought about ending my life and I it, it, it scared me so much it scared me so much that um I kept it to myself I didn't tell anybody um a couple of years later I got married I, I never told her um and then we went through a divorce and after that I joined the Marine Corps and I was 27 when I joined the Marine Corps, and I never spoke a word about it to anybody. Even when um, I got deployed to Iraq in 2003, I, I didn't tell anybody. And when I was in Iraq, I remember the things that going on in the war. I, I saw this lady, her arm was blown off, and they had a tourniquet so she wouldn't bleed out. And just seeing the horrific things over there, it didn't faze me because I remember how hell was, and hell was a thousand times worse than war. Going to war... Like the wars going on right now in in the Ukraine and in Israel, that's like going to a Sunday picnic, a, a beautiful Sunday picnic, and having a, a beautiful day compared to what hell is. I would go to war every single day for the rest of my life, rather than go to hell. And um, I kept it to myself because it was just so horrific, and 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 I just thought the Lord only showed this to me so that I wouldn't want to. Well, I wouldn't want to take my life. And I just said, okay, good. I'm not going to, I'm, I'm not going to try to take my life. Now, uh, I, I want to tell you this. About four years ago, um, I was had a job, and I was a tow truck driver. I don't have this job anymore, but I was taking a vehicle to a customer, and I dropped the vehicle at the customer's house, and the lady and I started talking, and she told me she was um, she had a daughter who was 14 years old, and the daughter attempted suicide a few times. And she didn't know what to do. She didn't. She she was on medication, counseling. She was the daughter was seeking professional help, but was still suicidal. And as she, as soon as she told me this story, I the Holy Spirit immediately told me I got to tell her my story. I asked the lady, "Can I talk to your daughter? Can you bring your daughter outside and I tell her my story?" And she did. And so I told my story to the daughter, 
and then I left. I, I didn't think anything about it. Now, I forgot her name, but I, let's just say her name's Melissa. Just about four weeks later, I'm, I'm delivering a car to another customer in a different town, 35, 40 miles away from the town that I was at before. And this was the summertime. So I have the windows up, have the AC on, and I see a little girl walking the dog. And she waves high at me, and I stop, I stop my truck because I'm going really slow. I'm going maybe about 15 miles an hour. I'm going really slow because I'm looking for the house on my, my phone, on my GPS, um, trying to get the right location. She, so I stopped the car, rolled the window down, and she goes, hey, Angel, hi. How are you doing? And I don't recognize her. And I said, who are you? And she goes, hey, it's me, Melissa. Don't you remember me? And I looked at her and said, oh, hey, how are you doing, sweetie? And, um, and, and she goes, Angel. She goes, you, when you told me that your story, what happened to you? She said, I, I don't want to end my life no more. I gave my life to Jesus, and I want to live for God, and I'm going to church now. And um, I'm reading my Bible every day, and um, I want to live. She told me that. <laughs> so I thank God for that. And I said, well, thank you, sweetheart. I said, thank you for letting me know, and I'm glad I, I saw you again. I'm glad everything's okay with you. She goes, yeah, things are a lot better. And um, and then I left. And I, th I thank God for that because that was a um, confirmation that the Lord showed me that he wanted me to tell that story. And after that, um, little by little, the Lord started telling me that I need to start telling my story. So that's why I'm here today because, it, you know, I, believe me, I, didn't, I don't want to tell my story. I, I hate telling my story. I hate going back there again. But if it's going to help somebody from trying to end their lives, I'll, I'll just give God all the glory. And that's the only reason why I'm here because I have to obey the Lord and tell my story. And the Lord doesn't want anybody to go there. This is a horrific place. It's a horrific place. Nobody needs to go there. And we send ourselves there if we don't repent, if we don't seek the Lord every day with all our hearts, and we fall into sin. We could easily go back there again. And I just want to tell people, you know, especially, let me tell you, if you feel like ending your life, if you feel that that's the answer, it's just not the answer. If if somebody told you you're going to be okay and go to heaven, uh, that no, don't do that. Um, now, I do want to tell you, I never did drugs, okay? I was not on alcohol. I was clear-minded. I was I, I knew what I was doing, okay? I had full consciousness. And the only thing it was, it was, it was a spirit of that was haunting me every day, wanting me to end my life. Even though I gave my life to Jesus and I was going to church, um, this spirit was so strong, it still haunted me. And um, but the Lord, <laughs> thank you, Jesus. <sighs> he set me, He set me free, and I want to live. Okay, I'm not gonna. Um, uh, here's another thing I want to tell you. My life after this experience, my life got ten times worse. My life, <laughs> even till day, even now, is a whole lot worse. Uh, a hundred. Oh, so much worse. When I'm talking about worse, my problems. I have more problems, more issues, more things I'm facing um, in life. Like my health is going down. Uh, everything. It's just I don't want to talk about it. But I'm just saying it's got worse than that. Than that time I had uh, was in my life. And and but it was mainly because it was a spirit of soul. Now, uh, um, Jesus is is going to return one day soon, and I believe He is. And so we, we, I just want to encourage everybody that we gotta, we gotta live, okay? No matter how hard it could be here on this life, you could even be in prison for life. You could even be on parole, and you still have hope. You still have hope to repent because when you're in hell, if you go to hell, I don't want you to go there. There is no hope, zero, okay? It, it, you're done with. You are totally done with. You're gonna be there forever if you're an inmate and you have death uh, or, or life sentence or you're on death row, you should rejoice because you have a thousand times more hope now than being in this place. It is so horrific. Okay. It is so horrific. Like I just, if you would just see a demon in his eyes, this is how horrific it is. Just see the, the hatred they have for us. You would not live. You have a heart attack or an aneurysm. It will, it will kill you just to see a demon face to face. They're so horrific. And that's just that's just a demon. That's not what, what hell is and what he's doing to you. So that's my testimony there. And I just pray if anybody needs help, to seek help. And um, 
just to call out to Jesus. You surrender your life to him. Give your life to Jesus. He is the only begotten son of God. He died. He lived on this life without sin. And he took our place. He took our place on the cross. He died. The shedding of his blood has cleansed us our sin. And all you have to do is believe in him, trust in him, and ask him to be Lord of your life. There's no certain words to say. Just call out to Jesus. He is the only way to the Father. He is the only way. And he is the only begotten Son. And let me tell you, he is not, he was not created like some people or some religious think he was created like the Jehovah's Witness or the Mormons. And I'm going to say that philosophy is not true. He was always with God before the creation of all. And, and he is God. It's Just read the, the book of John. It describes who he is. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word is God. He is the Lord. He is God, and he loves us so much. And he wants everybody to live. Let me tell you, in heaven, when I saw that, that glimpse of heaven through his eyes, heaven, the throne room is so huge, it could fit every every creature that he has ever created in that throne room. That's how big it is. It is so huge. Every creature, every human being, that an animal that the Lord has made could fit in his throne room. And he wants us to be there. But we have a choice. We have a free will. And I didn't know that. I was ignorant. I, you know, I was deceived, thinking I was going to go there. And, and that's, that's another thing I want to tell people is, once saved, always saved. If you're born again and you believe you can't lose your salvation, no. We have to walk that straight and narrow path every day. Every day. But there's mercy and there's love. All we got to do is just say, Lord, forgive me. Just call out to Jesus right now. That's all. With all your heart. And he'll be there. I promise you, he will be there. Amen. Well, well, thank you so much for sharing that powerful testimony with us, brother. Um, I know it's going to be a blessing to a lot of people who watch this. Amen. So that we can wake up and know, like you said, that it is real. But we have also Jesus, who's just yes. as real and can help us yes. avoid going to that place. If we seek him, like you said, every day yes. with all our strength, that's what he wants from us. He wants a relationship yes. with us yes. every day. So we encourage all the viewers yes. to please give your life over to the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. And to share this video with somebody who maybe could be blessed by it too. And I also invite everybody who's watching this video to join a one-year fasting chain that I'm organizing in which I'll be fasting and praying every day for all the petitions that people send to this ministry. So I invite you to join in. You can fast one or two days each week or one or two days each month. And I'll be fasting every day so the chain does not get broken. I invite you to put all your prayer requests in the comments of this video and the other videos that produce so that we can lift them up in prayer yes. to the Lord. Yes, yes, yes. So that's my invitation to everybody watching. And I, once again, I want to thank Brother Angel for sharing this powerful testimony. Do you, do you mind if we do a quick prayer right now? Maybe somebody's watching this and they just are, are so desperate because I've already gave my testimony for a few times. And let me tell you, two, two, two men who saw my testimony immediately wanted to end their lives. Uh, and I left my phone number at the other, um, they were here in America and um, they called me. And um, so if somebody's right there is looking at this and you're just thinking about to end it right now, this is what you want to do. No, I'm going to say what the Lord told me, don't do it. Don't do it, okay? And I'm going to pray for you right now, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I bind this demon of suicide and depression, anxiety, hopelessness, fear. I bind these demons in the name of Jesus Christ, and I break you off this person right now, and I order you to come out of them right now. Come out of them right now in the name of Jesus. I break your hold off of them right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, get away from that person. Get away from that woman. Get away from that little girl. Get away from that young man. Get away from them right now in the name of Jesus. 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 Heavenly Father, bring your peace upon this person. Bring your peace and joy and love. Just shower them with your love and your presence right now, Father, in the name of Jesus. Put a hedge of protection and warn angels around them right now, Father, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father God, lift them up. Give them a hope and future. As your word says, I give you have a plan for your life, plan of a hope and a future and not of harm. And not of harm and death. Jeremiah 20, 
I believe 27, I believe. But anyways, the Lord has a plan and a purpose for your life. Okay? He has a plan and purpose. You are not a mistake. You're not a mistake. What's happening to you is an attack from the enemy. It's a spiritual attack. When I'm not seeing your problems, it doesn't matter what your problems are. It's a spiritual attack from the enemy. It's a spiritual attack from the enemy. Don't give up. Do not give up. I'm going to keep on praying for everybody who watches this in the name of Jesus. I'll pray for you every single day in Jesus' name. Just call out wherever you're at. Just get on your knees and cry out to God right now. Cry to the Lord Jesus. Just say, Lord Jesus, forgive me. Forgive me. This is a sin. Suicide is murder. You're murdering yourself and murder is a sin. You can't do that. Okay? Yeah, I didn't understand that. I did not understand that I'm myself. When the Lord showed me that I was myself, I said, Lord, I did not know that. Forgive me. It's a sin. We cannot do that, okay? God loves you. He created you. He made you. Before he created the heavens and earth, he thought about you. And he made you. He was already thinking about you before he even created all mankind, before he created all of creation. He was already thinking of you. And he has a plan and purpose for your life, okay? Don't give up. No matter how bad it is, don't give up. There is hope. I speak hope into you right now in the name of Jesus. Peace, hope, and love. And faith, thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father.